He wrote long ago, is there anything whereof it may be said? See, this is new. It hath been already of old time, which was before us. And Jacob took him rods of green poplar and of the hazel and chestnut tree and pilled white strakes in them and made the white appear which was in the rods. And he set the rods which he had pilled before the flocks in the gutters in the watering troughs when the flocks came to drink. And the flocks conceived before the rods and brought forth cattle ring straked, speckled and spotted. We subjected water to super-weak magnetic field impulses. These fields are tens of thousands of times weaker than the Earth's natural magnetic field. And that means they are negligibly small from the standpoint of modern science. Fish were introduced into water that had been treated in this way, and the fish soon produced an unusual hatch of small fry. They differed radically from other fish to which they were related, though they looked as much alike as twins. Gray stripes appear on the belly of all these males at once, along with colored spots, which had not been observed previously. These are called phenotype changes. And it is of fundamental importance that these changes appear not just in some of the treated fish, but in all of them at the same time. The experiment resulted in changes not only in the outward appearance of the fish, but also in their behavior. They began to react to outside stimuli in the same way. It was as if the whole school had acquired a collective mind. A whole important area of problems came up, which had not yet been studied whatsoever. Therefore, it was decided that it would suffice to establish even just the fact that behavior could change the form of animals using only water, which fact in and of itself is very significant. If water has such a strong effect, that is, we shouldn't make it public without thoroughly studying this. In 1932, sensational news traveled around the world. The American physicists Harold Urey and Albert Osborne had discovered that in addition to ordinary water, heavy water also exists in nature, deuterium 2O. The splitting of deuterium was the basis for the creation of the most destructive bomb, the hydrogen bomb. Now everybody knows very well what radioactive radiation can cause. But it turns out that there are other, even more awesome effects. Rather more horrific is the change in the structure of water covering huge areas thousands of kilometers larger than the nuclear weapons testing grounds. It makes no difference where the test was carried out, in the atmosphere, on the ground or underground. Colossal changes occur in the water, and the water's memory changes. And people drink that water, animals drink it, and suddenly terrible changes take place. When the explosion occurs, waves are formed which die out fairly quickly in the ground, but the water may continue to fluctuate for another 30 days. Swinging like a pendulum, the waves create a new and pathological ordering in the water. It has been noted that the number of suicides rises abruptly after such tests. By a factor of two, two and a half and three, medical experts had absolutely no explanation for this. But we could understand it. We showed the brain is made of water, about 85%. So these changes take place in the brain, and a conflict between the water structures arises. The bioplasm of the brain is disrupted, and the result is that the person is deprived even of such an extremely important incentive as the drive to live. In ancient legends, the hero would always be sent to fetch dead water in a place from which there is no return.
According to tradition, the only sea on earth in which there is no life came into existence where the destroyed cities Sodom and Gomorrah had been located, the Dead Sea. There really is no such thing as dead water. Water gives life. It may be used more correctly or less correctly, but it is always positive. How a person handles water. If he approaches the water with good thoughts or blesses it and says thank you to it, the quality of the water will improve and the water will have a positive effect on a person and on his body. According to the Chronicles, in 1472, Abbot Karl Gastinsis was arrested on the basis of a false denunciation and interrogated in connection with having caused a certain prominent lady to fall ill. While he was being held in a dungeon, the abbot was given only a crust of stale bread every day, along with a dipper of rotten, stinking water. After 40 days, the prison warden noticed that Father Karl not only had not gone into decline, but he even seemed to have gained health and strength, which only served to convince the inquisitors that the abbot had connection with dark forces. Later, Karl Gastinsis confessed under brutal torture that he had recited a prayer over the rotten water he has given, thanking the Lord for bestowing these trials upon him. After that, the water tasted bland and turned fresh and clear. We have two containers of emulsified crude oil, which is a byproduct of oil production, a stable combination of water and oil, which remain bound in this state for years. The test sample is irradiated. The element will treat one container for seven days, making the water molecules lessen their contact with the oil molecules. After four days, we compare the test sample and the control. The water has separated from the oil. At the boundary between the water and the oil phases, there are crater-like formations. This means that the separation process is continuing. The fields we use to influence the water are comparable in intensity with the electromagnetic field of the human heart. On the seventh day of treatment, the experiment is over. The water has completely separated from the oil. Expert estimates that oilmen have accumulated around a billion tons of emulsified crude oil. It cannot be used for industrial purposes. Ultimately, they get rid of the emulsion, pouring it right onto the ground and then horrible sludge lakes are formed in the oil fields. In the language of the Pemon Indian tribe in Venezuela, Roraima is translated as the mother of all waters. A group of Russian biophysicists set out for this destination in January 2005 to collect a unique sample of water, which scientists say has never been in direct contact with human beings. Such water exists in only one place on Earth, in Venezuela. According to one hypothesis, a continent called Gondwana existed in the southern hemisphere during the Paleozoic era. Powerful tectonic processes occurring in the Earth's crust three and a half million years ago split it into several parts. In this way, flat elevated plateaus were formed which the Indians call tepuis, meaning pillars. Roraima is the largest of them. 
It's a really remote place, very hard to get to. Three days of travel through the savanna and then the jungles. Then you climb an 800 meter wall. It takes a certain amount of enthusiasm. Therefore, we can say that the water we have there is in a unique virgin state. There is always a large cloud over Roraima. As evening approaches, a light haze appears. When the moon comes out from behind the mountain, the mist begins to glow with an even blue light. And in that light is visible how fine droplets of moisture are hanging in the still air. The slightest breath of a breeze and this watery dust forms into drops. This is the origin.